Hi guys, welcome to episode two of the Ultra Dimensional Podcast. My friend Sierra is back with me. Hi guys. So we're gonna jump right into the topics again. So, okay, this one's really good. So, since we cannot go against free will, how can curses be casted upon others then? And what if these people um, have protection barriers around them? And I'm talking about the people that have been cursed upon, not the ones that put the curse on them. What do you think? How people, how people put curses on like other people? Yeah, since we can't go against free will. Like how does that make sense? You can go against free will. <laughs> you can. I think, because the Lucifer experiment, remember? Bas- basically, um, the Lucifer experiment is when uh, people disconnect from source and mm-hmm. basically they just, they only think with their mind, not with their heart. So I think you are able to go against free will, it's just the energy of the intention. If you know what I mean. Yeah, and I think I don't know what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I feel like oh yeah, I know what I was gonna say now. I just had like a brain fart. So I think I guess they could go against it, but they're gonna be in very big trouble from I mean not from someone, but like karmic wise, because I mean, they basically are going against free will. So yeah, there's a lot of karmic repercussions there. Okay, I don't understand the whole evil eye concept. Like, what does that mean to you? I don't know. You don't either? I don't know either. (laughs) I was actually looking at like, spiritual decor the other day and I saw a bunch of evil eyes stuff and I was like I don't know what that's for like I don't understand how wearing that protects you from it (laughs) yeah I'm not really sure either um I think it's based off of uh the eye of Horus Mm -hmm. and they use it for protection I think that's where that originated from okay maybe Okay. Don't come for me, though. <laughs> okay, why Why do you think that we need certain ingredients to cast certain spells in witchcraft? Like, why can't these magicians or witches just use their manifestation techniques to bring what they desire? Or is it an older, like, way of teaching from the past that's just been passed down, and now we are more, like, the star seeds are more, like, instant manifestation like we don't need those ingredients anymore like are those just old ways of thinking i think so i mean i still know that people use ingredients because when i go to like the psychic eye there's a lot of ingredients that are empty and i'm like oh people are still using physical things i think uh I think what they use for like ingredients is just to help um, amplify. amplify, like uh, burning cedar or sage or palo santo. I think it's like just a way of helping the connection. Have you been to the psychic eye though? They have like the craziest ingredients. They have like dragon's blood and like all these crazy things. And I'm like, where do they get all this from? Like, what do you need this for? <laughs> exactly. Like, I I wouldn't go out and buy ingredients. I would probably make it myself. That's the point. Especially when you spell cast, right? I don't know. I don't spell cast. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, another thing I want to mention is, like, the fact that I... Well, like, supposedly, like, for example, like, with the tarot deck you have to like not let other people touch it and like not let 
and be getting dirty with other people's energy so you can use like alcohol or like alcohol wipes to clean it or to clean the other person's hands that you're reading for stuff like that and like i don't know where you stand on it but like i truly believe that all you need to do is like clean the energy with a thought mm -hmm. like that's just like where i come from at the moment like it, like i just can just clean it with a thought like it's and it's already done like i don't really think you need the physical things anymore especially since like the human resonance is off the charts exactly it's funny you say that though because uh i had that uh that i had this one spirit that like never left me since like childhood and the way this person got rid of her was just by a thought and it was like as long as you have god like somewhere in your room she won't come back i didn't know that that's really cool that reminds me of this episode that i was watching with pete it's I think it was like unsolved mysteries or something but it was really interesting and i've never well i actually have heard of these type of beings but um this father and this son were being bothered constantly by um shadow beings mm -hmm. and in the story they were explaining how they were like just like basically looked like shadows but they had red eyes and I didn't know they had red eyes. I didn't know what class of shadow beings they were. But anyways, they kept really bothering the father and the son and um, it got to a point where they just left the house but they were standing outside of it and they could see the, and they could see the shadow beings like protect, almost like protecting the, or claiming ownership of the house like that. And I really applaud the dad for doing this but basically what he did was he was so pissed that they were still bothering them and he said something along the lines of um like you are no longer allowed here or like you're not allowed here and then they just like immediately vanished that's crazy to like prove my point of like what i'm saying like all you need to do is claim your power and claim your position on things because like my dad, for example, like I was telling him this story and he said, and I know he's going to be listening to this. I had told him the story and he was like, he was like, oh, like I would never like speak to them or like approach them. And I'm like, well, you got to like take charge of the situation. They're going to like, mm -hmm. if you don't do anything, they're going to know that that's okay to do nothing. They're going to know that you're not going to do anything. They're going to know that you're like, well, what's, what's the word like passive not mm -hmm. passive but like you're just like, gonna allow it yeah you're gonna keep allowing it if you don't do if you don't say something yeah. about it or do something to stop it mm -hmm. um let's see. oh so this is i already asked you this but i'm gonna ask it again so it's 3 a.m a special psychic time where the veil is lifted because I wake up a lot at 3 a.m. and sometimes I have a feeling that someone or something's watching me or if that's just me like going a little crazy, I don't know. Um, I don't feel scared, but I do feel curious. What do you think this is? Like the time thing and then also like the feeling watch thing. That's a good question. I still can't really wrap my head around it i still think like 3 a.m is like a universal like time like how there's different time zones i, I think 3 a.m like at least corresponds with something collectively um and then what was the other one um oh i'm feeling when watch you, yeah feeling watch when you wake up at that time i don't know because like people say with the whole psychology thing like you can sense when someone's looking mm -hmm. at you and you mm -hmm. like look and they're looking at you so i don't i feel watched especially when i'm alone all the time yes but i've also noticed that i am always accompanied by a cat <laughs> mm. like i see a lot of black cats i see a lot of wild like feral cats 
and that's pretty normal where I grew up. I grew up in Hawaii, so there's like a lot of stray cats, but I've noticed when I moved out here, it's, you don't see them a lot, but I see a lot of cats. <laughs> So I've been feeling like watched too, especially like when I read a lot of alien books. I definitely felt watched while reading the one yesterday, the extraterrestrial contact one. And what I always do is just like, I put music on to like uplift me if I feel like it's like not a good feeling, not a good feeling watched kind of feeling. And that usually lightens up the mood because I mean, if it's like a low vibrational thing, they're gonna just feed off of that. So my method, if I feel like I'm being watched, I like laugh or watch funny things to lift the vibration around me and then they'll probably just leave. <laughs> okay, I thought this one's interesting. So when Aaron Dowdy said he was stopped at a traffic light once, this truck was about to hit him hard. He said he closed his eyes and the next second the truck was in the opposite direction of him, or should I say it was in a path that was nowhere gonna crash into him. So, to this day, I still wonder what happened. Um, so what do you think? Did he die in the other reality or universe or did he actually teleport to this reality before he could die in the other one? I think it's the second one. You think he teleported to this reality before he could die? I don't know, like from... I don't know, like certain things I read before in books have said that sometimes when you have a near-death experience, you come back, but you don't come back to the original timeline. You go to another one. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's like your second chance, but it was always contracted, but it's like, technically your second chance at completing that life but in another timeline mm -hmm. is that what you think mm -hmm. okay i think so interesting okay let's talk about angel numbers so i see them all the time the one i see the most is 999 or 777 i see all of them it's like i've seen I've, all of them too i've but seen i see those the most I think the one I see the most is 333. And I'm actually in my personal year number three, so. That's your what? Personal year number three. Oh. For numerology. But um, oh. I see one, one, two, three, four sometimes, and then I'll see like 654 backwards. And like, I don't know if those consider as angel numbers, but whenever I've I feel drawn to a certain thing or if something pops out at me, I look it up on Google. There must be like a meaning for like sequences though. I think mm -hmm. that's what that is. Like four, five, six, or one, two, three, four. Um, when did you start being aware of them? Like I started being aware of them, I think like a year and a half ago. And I just started seeing them everywhere. And I noticed that I'm not like looking for I'm not looking for them, but I see them mostly in license plates. And I could be driving anywhere and I just realize that that's how I know I'm in the right place at the right time. Or not that, but like that I'm on the right path. Or that I'm being divinely guided. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I just want to say I do see 1111 a lot or like 111. But um, I've been seeing synchronicity numbers mm -hmm. for almost like six years oh, wow yeah that is a really long time it i really didn't get into it though until like just a couple of years like probably like three or four years i did hear about them from my aunt she she's into like a lot of spirituality more like uh into the fairies and gnomes and all that but she had told me about uh, synchronicity numbers and um, told me the meanings of them. I just, I didn't really start taking them into account until like a couple years ago. Okay, did you have anything else to add about the angel numbers? 
So what do you think they mean though? Like that you're being guided? I think it means to me that everything's gonna be okay and that I'm being watched. I feel that too. Being watched in a good way. Yeah. Not in a bad way, yeah. And I notice like I'll have change randomly fall from my pockets even though I don't have any change in my pockets, especially like mm -hmm. dimes and pennies. Yeah. Oh my God, that reminds me of, you know how I was telling you how when I was counting my drawer um, at my previous job, like literally some quarters, like a ton of quarters just literally magically appeared because I wouldn't just stop counting the quarters and then just realize that there's more there. Like those literally appeared out of nowhere and I was like so shocked. So I think they had disappeared and then they appeared again mm -hmm. when I had to count it because I swear to you there was nothing in that little <laughs> slot where they go. Yeah. And then the next moment where I, where I check why my counting was off, they're like there and I'm like, oh my God. 